All right, so now to wrap up the core aspect of evolution, what we want to take a look at is scientific explanations for the origin of life and then the diversity of life we have on Earth today. So how did life start on Earth? And then let's look at the diversity and the pattern of what produced the diversity of life on Earth. Now, I really want to stress this. The origin of life is different than evolution. Origin is how it got here. Evolution is how it changes. Scientists are exploring a lot of different possibilities and lots of different explanations or perspectives on origin. This is why we don't have the theory of origin of life. Instead, we have hypothesis. Maybe it was this way, maybe it was this way. But when it comes to evolution, it is a theory. We're not guessing. Life evolves this way or this way or this way through these mechanisms. These are factors that create it. This is what can cause it, etc. This is how we can measure it. Evolution is a theory which has lots and lots and lots of data to support it. Origin is still in the hypothesis stage, still the uncertainty. What is the best scientific explanation for the origin of life? This is changing as we explore more on Earth as well as other planets. And then the diversity of life is the pattern life has gone through as it's evolved and changed over the course of the Earth's history. So the first thing to mention, if you guys are interested in this, and this is an area of science, like, wow, that, this is cool, this is interesting, I want to get maybe a little bit more of a background, I would encourage you to check out the historical geology course we offer. <clears throat> Everybody is going to need a physical lab science course. No matter what your degree is, you need a physical lab science. This is an option for you. So physical or historical geology, Geo 102, is usually offered in the spring. It talks about life from the beginning of time, evolutionary leaps, the mass extinctions that have occurred. A lot of what we talk about in this lecture is what this course covers, just a lot more in depth. So it can give you a really, really good background on origin from a scientific perspective, and then the progression of life throughout the course of the Earth's history. Okay, so just a little bit of a plug there. If anybody's looking for a historical geology or a geology course, check it out. Explore a little bit more. Might be something you're interested in. Okay, so now let's get back to the Earth and the history of the Earth. When we look at the Earth and the history of it, we divide the timeline up into different categories. Eons are the broadest category of time. We then divide eons into smaller subdivisions called eras. Eras then are further subdivided into subdivisions called periods. So it's similar to scientific classification where we have domain, kingdom, phylum. <clears throat> when we talk about the Earth's history in time, geological time, we go eons, eras, periods. Now, Earth, the Earth has been dated to approximately 4.6 billion years old. <clears throat> Geologically, that is what we have dated the Earth to, 4.6 billion years. Now, you're going to hear controversial numbers. Some folks think the Earth is only 6,000 years old. But based on geology, chemistry, archaeology, physics, all these different physical sciences, they combine that information together to estimate the age of the Earth around 4.6 billion years old. So when we look at geological time, there's a lot of time out there. So it's definitely, there's enough time for life to have evolved. Okay, so here's kind of the overview. This came out of the book. I'd encourage you guys to use the one in the book. It's a lot more detailed. This is unfortunately kind of a small image here. But what we're looking at is the different time periods of the Earth's history, the different eras, the aeons, the periods, etc., and what happened during each of these big time periods or the, the big categories of time throughout the Earth's history. Okay, so when life emerged, it emerged during what we call the Archean. Okay, this is not Archaea in regards to Protists, this is an eon of time on the Earth. 
And this is estimated to be about 3.8 to 3.6 billion years ago is when it's estimated life first showed up on Earth. Okay? We may find evidence to say it's older, but the current scientific evidence indicates 3.8 to about 3.6 billion years ago for life to originate on this planet. The earliest life known to man, known to science, on Earth was single-celled. It was what we call prokaryotic. All right, <clears throat> the fossil evidence indicates this is the oldest evidence of life on Earth, these fossils of prokaryotic organisms. So we can start with that. Now the question is, how did it get here? How did it start? The more important question is, what can we test? What can we scientifically test and take a look at and try to understand if this is how it came to Earth. Okay, so there's lots of different hypotheses out there. One hypothesis is that life came from another planet. All right, the Earth was seeded with the first life forms. So the thought, what is being tested and studied right now, is that did life emerge, or life made it to Earth by an asteroid? Let me get that out of the way. Some kind of asteroid, some kind of meteorite, some projectile from another planet came to Earth, hits Earth, and it carries with it this earliest life form. All right, so the Earth is thought to have been seeded with the earliest life forms that way. So, design an experiment. So here's a hypothesis. Life came to Earth through a meteor. Let's design an experiment. Let's go to other planets and look for evidence of life. We're out with rovers on Mars. We've gone to the moon. We're trying to reach other planets in our solar system to look for evidence of life. If we find life or evidence of life, then it becomes possible that that is how life got to Earth. Is an asteroid came from another planet, carrying life with it, brought it to Earth. Once it got to Earth, then it evolved into the diversity we see today. So very testable still in the hypothesis stage because we don't know if this is the best scientific explanation. So that's why we're exploring space right now, looking at all these other planets. But again, I want to stress the key here is the fact that I can design an experiment, any of us can, we can test it with the scientific method, we can accept or reject this hypothesis based upon scientific evidence. That's the goal. All right, so here is another testable hypothesis. Did life arise from inorganic matter? So back in 1953, same year Watson and Crick are discovering and cracking the DNA code, <clears throat> Miller's, Miller and Urey designed an experiment to see is it possible life originated this way. So let's look at what early Earth might have looked like. <clears throat> gases, water, <clears throat> ammonium, excuse me, methane, hydrogen. These various components are believed to have been in the early Earth's atmosphere. Energy. They used electric sparks from electrodes. Energy is present on Earth. Volcanic eruptions, plate tectonics moving, electrical storms, all these things are present. Those are just natural phenomena. So when Miller and Urey combine these things, and they used the electrodes to induce or introduce an electric spark, it caused the gases and the bonds holding them together to rupture. Those bonds broke. Now, as the environment cooled down in their experiment, the elements rearranged themselves in different combinations. So look at the basic elements. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, C-H-O-N. Those are the four essential 
primary elements for all living things. When those elements rearranged themselves as they cooled, they started forming basic organic molecules. Lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, etc. So it's thought this might be a possible explanation that this is how life arose on Earth through this inorganic origin, inorganic evolution that then started to create the earliest cells, or we call them protocells, and then the complexity continued to change, evolve over the course of billions of years. There's enough time. It's just a matter of do we have enough evidence to support this hypothesis? Do we then move it <clears throat> to the theory of life originating this way? Still being tested, still being debated. This one is a front runner, though, at this point. What we can agree on, though, is that the earliest life arose in an aquatic environment. Everybody with different hypotheses do tend to agree life originated in an aquatic environment. Now, whether it was at the thermal vents in the bottom of the ocean, or it was sulfur springs, it was the coastal regions, that's debatable. But life arose in an aquatic environment. If you consider life today, it has to have water. It is absolutely dependent upon water for survival. So the com main component of the cell, phospholipid membrane, proteins, Inside of it, though, lots and lots of fluid, <clears throat> water. Water is a universal solvent. So he has believed life arose in some kind of aquatic environment, and then it continued to evolve and adapt, eventually making its way into land-based environments. So if Miller and Urey were correct, their thought is that the earliest basic structure are these things called protocells basic cell shape, cell structure. You get phospholipids, a bunch of those aggregate together. They like to get next to each other. Heads like water, tails don't. They line up and then they start to form the basic structure of a membrane. And it's thought, well, okay, these started developing the basic membrane structure. This has been recreated in the laboratory experiments that this aggregation of phospholipids will form a simple basic membrane. Is it possible then that these are the structures that gave rise to the earliest cells? And the challenge is trying to recreate this and trying to draw enough conclusive evidence to say this is what science thinks. What hap This is the way it is believed to have happened based on scientific evidence. Um, so not a simple process, not a, by any means a simple easy task, but possibly this is how life originated through this chemical origin process. Lots of other hypotheses. Again, I will stress it over and over. The key is what can be tested scientifically. That's what we're trying to figure out and deduce. If you can't test for it, it doesn't go in the realm of science. It's not to say you can't say, I think this is how it happened, but if there's no way to test for it, there's no way to really have empirical evidence to support it. It's a belief. It's a faith, which is fantastic, but that's very different than science, very different than evidence that supports it. Now, once they got here, how they got here, we're still trying to sort that out. But what we can do is look at the history of life through the fossil record. And a great way to do this is look at sedimentary rock. So if you guys drive around usually northern part of Illinois, south, southern or western near St. Louis, Missouri areas, and you go through some of these road areas, you're going to see layer and layer and layer of rock stacked up. <clears throat> this is sedimentary rock. And what we can do is reconstruct the past, the history of the earth, by looking at those layers of rocks. This is a great picture, a great story of what has happened on earth over the course of millions and billions of years. So some key things we'll talk about when we get into sedimentary rock and the fossil record is the older fossils are always deeper. Younger fossils are on the top. Complex fossils are up top. Simpler fossils are deeper. We see this pattern persisting over and over and over when we look at sedimentary rock layers. Okay, so in the next lecture we're going to take a look at what is the beginning of the fossil record and what things do we have in the fossil record.